Hey everybody, welcome back to the Chaotic Little Book Corner. My name's Acacia. Today I'm going to be doing a chit chat video. So I have a cup of coffee in a T-Rex mug. So I feel like we're ready. Um, there's been a video circulating the booktube community a little bit. Not like crazy, but it's not like wildfire at this point, but it's going. And it was started by Portal on the Pages' Sophie, who, oh my gosh, that girl though, I love her. I love her to death. She's such a sweet and intelligent woman and I watched her video talking about how she wants to read less and the structure of booktube and how there's the pressure to read more rather than enjoy. And then Amanda Center joined in the conversation and you guys know how I feel about Amanda Center. And she also agreed with that and she really wants to try and enjoy her reading a little bit more, kind of try and dive into things, but she still wants to get her TBR finished by 2018, I believe. And then 70s Reader, who I will link all of these videos and channels down below, she also spoke about it. And she talked about the culture of consumerism, the idea of reading to kind of just get everything done and to have something to talk about. And then she also spoke about the community in that a lot of people have made videos in the past talking about what's wrong with booktube, complaining about hauls, complaining about wrap ups and how nobody has more independent sort of thoughts and videos. I think that was what she was saying. Correct me if I'm wrong, please down below, let me know. Here are my two cents, and the reason that I wanted to give my two cents is a couple reasons. First and foremost, I have a similar opinion, but slightly different. Second is that I think that it's a really important topic, and I think we just need to kind of keep the conversation going. So let's start with the beginning conversation, which is the idea of reading less. A lot of you guys have asked me, how do you read so much, Acacia? I have wrap-ups twice a month where I usually have 10 to 15 books in the wrap-ups, which means I'm reading about a book a day. That seems like a lot. It's really not <laughs> when you're unemployed and at home all of the time. For those of you who don't know about my mental illness and are new to the channel, I'll link my video talking about my mental illness down below and explaining what it is. I have DID, Dissociative Identity Disorder. While I have improved in some aspects of my life, I'm not 100% better and I probably won't be for about 5 to 10 years and that's okay. I'm completely fine with that. But the thing that's really, really hard for me right now is the switching. So disassociative identity disorder for me is um, the fugue states and forgetting and again, I will link the video discussing all of that down below. You guys are more than welcome to ask questions if you have them. So what it used to be called is multiple personality disorder, which has a lot of stigma behind it. I know, please hear me out because it is real. Um, so I lose days, I lose track of time. And the other thing that will happen is while I'm out in public, if something triggers me, I will fugue and I will end up in random places that I don't know. So I don't really leave the house very often. And when I do, there's a lot of prep work that goes into it, thought process that goes into it, and a lot of time and energy really goes into it. So I try and leave the house as little as possible. As a result, I have a lot of free time on my hands and a lot of time where I can read. Um, my dad works from home, but it ends up being that I'm alone eight out of 12 hours of the day, sometimes more. And that leaves me a lot of room for communication with you guys in the booktube world, but it also leaves me a lot of time to read. I really struggled with reading as a child. I was dyslexic, or I still am dyslexic, um, and I didn't learn how to read till the third or fourth grade. And it took me years to get into the, the kind of groove of reading, and then I loved reading through fifth grade, and then in sixth and seventh grade, I stopped loving it again because reasons. And then, so I learned how to read. I loved how to read for like a year and then I lost the love. And then I didn't get back into like loving reading until I ended up in the ninth grade. And then it became, I wasn't reading anything that I was actually told to read. I was reading everything and anything I could to just hide from the world. Anyway, my reading journey has been a long one. So 
At this point though, I have time to read. I love to read and I'm good at it. I can read 50 pages within an hour when I really set my mind to it and I don't like distract myself with YouTube videos. So I really, really love that about myself and I really love that I can do it. I can read 50 pages in an hour and actually still get quite a bit out of it. I can read a full book in an hour and really, no, that wasn't the right wording. I can read a full book in a day and still get a lot out of it. I am not an anomaly, but I am one person. Not everybody can do that. So the people that really want to slow down and take their time with reading, some of them are unemployed. Some of them are employed. Some of them just read slower. Some of them take more time to really dive into a story. It's really, really different for each person. And so what works for one person might not work for another. What's working for me right now is just continually reading. I find that when I stop reading, I end up losing momentum and I stop really understanding and I stop really getting into it. So for me, I continually read and I read fast because for me it works and it keeps my brain stimulated. So I really get more from it. So it's not that I want to read less. I don't think that's a really a thing but for me I think I want to find more books that take more time I really haven't found a good chunker of a book that's like six or seven or eight hundred pages in a while the last one I found was Villette and I really enjoyed that and I'd like to get into more I think Dickens is my next choice on that then on 70s readers she talked a little bit about the lack of reviews on channels or so what she talked about was the so what conversation. She talked about her schooling and a teacher who would write SW which meant so what on her papers which was an interesting context. I think I might have had a teacher who would have done the same if they'd been allowed. Mm. And she talked a little bit about how a lot of reviews in the booktube community are based around plot summary themes and characters, which she said felt like a fifth grade book report. I can agree with that. I myself try really hard to only do full length book reviews when they change my life, they teach me something, they inspire something, or they make me feel like I need to talk. Those are the times that I will talk about a book alone in its own video. Otherwise, I will only bring it up in a wrap up. And even then, I really don't touch on the books that I find obnoxious, rude, stupid, um, bad. If I DNF a book, I usually don't talk about it unless it's a buddy read, in which case I will do it because I want to make sure that I mention my buddy because I want to give all of my booktube friends and family their due credit. And I want to make sure that they are really um, brought to the fore center even if I didn't enjoy the book, that booktuber really deserves a shout out because they put in the time and energy with me. Now, for me, book reviews are based around what the book inspired in me. They're not based around the plot. And a lot of people have told me that they wish they learned more about the books from the summary that I should be giving. But if you want the summary of a book from me, you want to talk, you want to watch my wrap ups. My reviews are talking about what the book inspired. I'll give a brief summary, but never like in depth. I've watched a couple of book reviews that I definitely feel are fifth grade style, but for me, I like watching those sometimes because I'm going to learn more about what I might want to read than what I might not want to read. However, if a person comes on and they're passionate and excited and only talking about what the book inspired in them, I'm also really willing to read it because I want to get inspired and encouraged to read as well. I enjoy wrap ups and hauls. I don't really, <laughs> I like filming them, they're easy. I also like watching them a lot, which makes me want to do them. I enjoy doing wrap ups because it helps me kind of feel a little bit more centered around what's going on. Again, I don't talk about books I don't like. If you would like me to start talking about those, let me know. But like for the most part, if I don't like a book, I DNF it or I finish it and then I put it aside and I put it on a pile and I sell it. And I sell it because I don't ever want my bookshelves to be cluttered with books that I don't enjoy. So everything on this shelf is a three star or higher. I think I have one book that I hate to the point of like I want it for the book Yes, I own one book that I hated so much that one, I made a review about it, and two, 
I keep it so that I can talk about books that I don't like. What, like when there's a tag video and it's like which book do you hate I'm like this one. So that one I keep. <laughs> um, but other than that three stars or higher. Um, as far as all of that goes I really like watching those videos and I like making them. If you don't like hauls don't watch them. If you don't like wrap ups don't watch them. It's really not, it's not required for you to watch every single video that your favorite YouTuber comes out with. They're going to be okay if you don't watch one video because what they're going to get out of you watching it and enjoying it is going to be more helpful than you watching something you don't enjoy and then feeling negative towards it. I would rather that you skip every video of mine that you don't like, give me no views on those, and then the one time that I like post, if you really love my reviews and you only watch them, great keep watching my reviews, skip the rest of them. I'm totally fine with that because that shows me what you enjoy. When you comment, when you give thumbs up, all of those things tell me that these things you enjoy and you'd like to see more of them. If you interact with me that way, I'm gonna get better feedback than if you attack when you don't like something. That for me, that positive feedback is really more constructive than negative. I'm one person, I'm talking from opinion, so other people might like constructive criticism in a negative way. Um, it doesn't work for me. <laughs> it puts me on the defense. Um, and, and that's because I get a lot of constructive criticism in my email from a lot of really nice people who think that I'm really crazy and really lying and it's great. So if, <laughs> if you get negative, you're going to go in that category and it's going to feel really weird. And I, I, I know what you're trying to do, but like, whew, it gets weird. Um, so those are my thoughts on that. And then my last thoughts are based around TBRs. Amanda wants to get her TBR down. A lot of people are really trying to take down their TBR. I don't ever want to not have a TBR on my shelf. <laughs> I feel really strongly that I like having a TBR because what it gives me options so I feel like I have a lot to choose from and two a TBR gives me a goal and right now in my life the TBR thing might change for me but right now in my life my books this channel and you guys you're my social circle you're my lifeline you're my you're my center of my universe because I don't have much else going on and I want this to be a job and I want to have a career in this world and the minute I run out of books to read is the minute I'm gonna feel like I'm done. I don't ever want to be done with you guys and I don't ever want to be done with reading. So for me a constant TBR is really important. I feel very driven to always have a TBR, to always have a currently reading pile. I usually have five to six books going. I've considered doing a currently reading video once a week but I don't know if you guys would want to see that. Let me know. Comment below. Um, but for me TBR is like primo. I love it. I think it's one of my favorite things to have is to be reads. Um, I organize my books by shelf um, of, so I organize my shelves by TBR and then genre. Like, so like there's the red shelf and then there's an unread shelf and each shelf is read by genre. Yeah, that made sense. But anyway, um, all of those things for me really kind of hit home. The last thing I want to really address is consumerism. Okay, I really, really, really appreciate what 70s Reader was talking about with the idea of people just buying and buying and buying and buying and buying. Here in Maine, there is a very, very sad consumeristic kind of intent where I live right now in a small town, low income community, and there's a definite consumer environment. We have antiquing stores everywhere and then we have a dollar tree like it doesn't make sense and and I know from growing up in this community and unfortunately um fortunately for me but unfortunately for the community um there's a there's a real 
my family's middle class most of this town is not my family came from away um, which has always caused problems in the community for my family um, but in general as I grew up I grew up with fresh vegetables I grew up with my dad having a garden and my parents having jobs and not living on like food stamps and my parents taught me at a really young age how to budget um, and that education was my way to kind of learn and to have cash and to grow education is really not valued in this community and the consumerism of lower end products from such as Walmart or Dollar Tree is really really easy because they need things that are cheap and easily disposable. I really believe consumerism is a problem. I do. But I believe that my consumerism in my situation is is at a level of even and equal. What I consume and what my consumerism entails of is books. I don't buy new clothes very often, which is why you see the same clothes repetitively. Also, I'm a heavy girl, so only a few things fit nowadays, which is fine. <laughs> um, when I do buy items, I buy items that are a higher price point, but they last forever. And I really like to invest rather than spend. The only thing I spend on is books. And I'm going to link down below my book buying um, like how it works. I did a video talking about how I spent money and everything. I put my books back into the community. I sell them back. I bring them to Goodwill. I put them into libraries. I donate them. Whatever I can do to put the books that I don't like back into the book circulation, I will because I think that that and buying used is really the best way to offset the consumerism aspect. I try very hard not to buy from full price stores. When I do, it's from either Abe Books, which is used. Oh, so that doesn't count. Um, Book Depository is the other place. I think, don't quote me on this yet, I think I'm going to be switching to Barnes & Noble um, from Book Depository. I'm not sure yet. I think if I want a specific edition, I'll still go to Book Depository, but Actually, I'll probably just go to Abe Books if that's the case. We'll find out. But recently I worked with, um, I bought from Barnes & Noble and I felt really good about the customer service and the research that I did into how they treat their customers and how they treat their associates was a really good even thing. I want to keep doing a little more digging, but the way that I consume is I consume by putting money into places where I think that the customer service is good, the treatment of the um, the workers is good, and also I see the company doing good. I don't shop at places like Walmart because there's a lot of negative stuff that they do for their associates. I also try and avoid big brand name stores like Macy's and Juicy Penny just because they're so big and they knock so many people's smaller businesses out of the water that it's just really hard. Supporting local environments, re buying local, um, shopping used, things of that nature with books and consumerism, that for me is the best way to offset consumerism, to really put money back into the pocket of the little guy, to put money back into somebody's pocket who's in a smaller community, who's in a, 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 a lesser, you know, who, who might have less than you. Um, Better Books, they donate a book to um, a child in need or a, a library down in... Um, in different communities that have less money um, when you buy a book from them. Um, I'll link them down below. There's a lot of different bookstores and groups that will donate or help outside communities and that to me is a huge way for me to justify and explain why and how I buy so many books. I want to do good with my reading and I want to do good with my purchasing and that's how I do the consumerism thing. If I can find a place where I feel it's going towards a good place, I will do that. Um, so those are my thoughts. I feel like that was a little all over the place, but better than the last seven takes. So I'll take that. And I really want to know your thoughts. How do you feel about all this? How do you want, like, how do you really 
go about thinking about your books, your reading style, your consumerism aspect of your books and all of these things. Where, what do you think about all these things? I want to know. Um, so continue the conversation down below if you feel so obliged, make videos, whatever. I again will link 70s readers, um, Sophie from Portal on the Pages and Amanda Center's videos talking about this topic down below. I will talk to you guys in my next video and I love you all.